I'm sure many of you are going to go, oh, I can play a double stroke roll. But it sounds like Sloppy Joe. Sloppy Joe. In this lesson, I'm going to show you the secret to a killing double stroke roll. Hey everyone, welcome back to another Jazz Rummer Q-Tip of the Week. If you're new, thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Quincy Davis. You're going to enjoy this lesson, I'm confident. So go ahead and smash that like button. And if you're not subscribed, why not? Where you been? I put out a lot of videos that many drummers all over the world have found helpful, and I think you will too. So the double stroke roll, we're going to break this thing down. But first, we're going to check out Tony Williams' breakdown, his approach to playing the double stroke roll. Then we're going to come back and I'm going to show you ways of improving your, your double stroke rolls, incorporating it into other rudiments, and then ultimately incorporate it into your playing around the kit. So if you're down and if you're ready, we're going to do this thing. Are you ready? Because I'm doing it regardless. Are you ready? Are you really, really ready? Are you ready, 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 really, ready? Re what? Most drummers I come across play with the front part of the hand like this, with just maybe these two fingers. And uh, they rely basically on bounce, meaning that uh, they're relegated to the surface that they're playing on. And they drop the stick and bounce it along like that. It's kind of a willy-nilly, haphazard type of technique to me. So from years of practice and watching a lot of drummers, because when I started very young, I started when I was nine, and uh, the first time I played a drum set was in front of an audience. And at that time, there were many drummers around, traveling around the country, that were incredible drummers. And I was fortunate enough to be able to see them. And I found out through watching them that the best drummers played a different way. They played with the back part of the hand meaning these last two fingers. They held the stick basically here. So that means that the drummer has to play with his hand and the hand and not, not bouncing it, say, like this, but holding it with all the fingers and being in control. That's the difference. So there you have it, direct from Tony Williams' mouth, his approach to playing the, the double stroke roll. So let's break down kind of what he was talking about. First of all, he, he talked about holding the stick from uh, the back of your hand, right? So making sure that your pinky, your pinkies, if you're, if you're playing match grip, your pinkies are on the stick through the whole stroke, right? Through both notes. So as opposed to letting go, which many drummers do, right? You're going to hold on and try to control both notes. So if you go really slow, it'll sound like this. And you hear how both notes are equal? It's not, we're not just letting the stick go. Right? So all notes that you play in this stroke, in this uh, rudiment, are even and should be the same volume. That's how you get that bazooka, or the helicopter. We're going with helicopter. Uh, that helicopter sound, so. And I suggest, because many of you are not going to be used to this, I'm sure many of you, probably most of you, drop your stick, right? And that's exactly what he was saying he does not do. Why do you think he has such a clear and big and full and beautiful sound? Because he's controlling every note he plays. So start slow. get get that sound in your ears and then slowly build it up obviously as you as you get faster um, you want to take your time getting faster you don't want to rush it and even if you play quieter see I'm playing quieter but it's still even it's not see I'm just dropping the stick now 
and I, I don't have the control over each note. So we're getting away from that approach. And you have to be very relaxed. If you're too tense and you're trying to control the notes too much, that, that will be the result. You can't be so tight that you're over controlling each note. You still have to be very relaxed. I like to use the term or the phrase uh, firmly relaxed. You have to be firm, but you also have to be relaxed, right? Two, two different um, kind of feelings, but you have to be doing them at the same time. And you play a little faster. Oops. Again, through all, both notes that I play on each hand, my whole hand are, is playing each note. I'm not, I'm not using my fingers. I'm not doing that. I'm using my wrists, okay? If you're playing traditional, I like to use the web of my thumb to kind of generate the stroke, right? It's this kind of pulley pulley motion. So I'm sure, you know, if you play traditional, you've done this before, where it's the same thing, but just faster. It's just faster. So that first note, you kind of have to let go. This is not, this is not wrist. I find if I, if I over, if I play a double stroke roll solely with my wrists in my left hand, I can only get so fast. And it's almost like I'm over controlling it. However, if you're comfortable controlling each note with your wrist playing, playing traditional as well, by all means, the, the end goal, the end goal is to play your strokes even, to play your notes even. Not... Because I'm sure many of you are going to go, oh, I can play a double stroke roll. But it sounds like Sloppy Joe. Sloppy Joe. I want mine to sound crisp and clean. Crispy. Right? Clear. So even when you speed up, and it's really crucial when you turn the snares on. Listen. accenting now and you lose the separation the clarity between notes okay okay so that is how I approach and how what Tony was talking about as far as his approach to playing the double stroke role it's incorporated in pretty much every rudiment that you can think of. You're always playing at least two notes on a hand, right? Um, what's a good? The paradiddle. There it is. And if you accent it, you lose that control. You hear how even it is? That's a very good um, exercise for you to work on playing evenly your 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 uh, paradiddle, and that's going to force you to address your double stroke, the two notes that you play in the paradiddle on each hand. Again, right? Even. So as you speed up. Why did I breathe like that? Well, I could hear you. you. You asked that question. I know someone was wondering, why did he do that? Why did he breathe like that? Well, I'm trying to make sure I'm relaxed. When I'm tight, when I get tight here. And when I do that, the result is never good on the drums, right? So I wanted to just say, hey, chill out, Q. Chill out and relax. Breathing out, lowering your shoulders, making sure you're, you're getting a nice full breath is very important to doing that. 
Okay, so the so the paradiddle. Paradiddle diddle. There's the double stroke. Accent, and then everything else has to be even. Even. Even Steven, please. Right? Or no accent. Right? Ah, that's not very clean. But you can hear each note being articulated, right? That's the idea. Regardless of the rudiment, uh, a drag. There's a double stroke. So I'm not just dropping my stick and going. Although that's an approach to playing a drag, which is fine. But if you want to think more rudimental, you know, I'm a big fan of the DCI, Drum Corps International. A lot of the students at our school, UN University of North Texas, are in some of these uh, wonderful drum corps. One in particular, Santa Clara Vanguard. The competition, the, the final competition is tonight. Go, go, Paul Rennick, Sandy Rennick, everybody cheering for you. Anyway, um, they play very clean, and in order for them to play together, they have to play their doubles really clean and clear using their wrists. So when you play a, 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 a drag, it's not, although that's cool, that's an effect, and I use that all the time, but this is also an, a, a sound. hear how that sounds so I'll play it with more of a lazy drag which is again not a negative thing it's just a sound more of a buzzed drag we'll call it and then here's more of a double stroke kind of drag you hear the difference okay so it's really crucial to all of your rudiments so whenever you have two notes on one hand think about this approach to playing double stroke rolls All right, so now we got the whole kit set up, and I'm just going to kind of play some things and just point out when I use a double stroke roll, okay, um, and the effect that I think it's having on, on my sound and my approach. So, ah, there it was. I didn't even get one note in without using a double stroke roll. Did you hear that? Just a, a good old-fashioned five-stroke roll. Boom. Boom. I'm not going, I'm not doing that. I'm going, here, he, can you hear how you can hear each note being articulated? That's crucial. Ah, there's that drag, right? Oh. There's a, a four-stroke rough, but it's inverted, kind of. Right, left, left, right. Philly Joe Jones. Arigato gozaimasu. Right? There's that double. So. Again, even. Six-stroke roll. There's, there it is again. Dang it. I can't, I can't play anything without playing a double-stroke roll. You're getting the point, though. Woo. I'm just going to play a little bit now. Right? Thank you, Art Blakey. Arigatou gozaimasu. I know. I know. Military triplets. There's that double. See? It's all over the place. They're all over the place. And the better you and the cleaner you play them with more control, like Tony Williams. It's gonna make your playing sound so be so much better. There, there it is. Ah. 
Nah, that's a little different because I'm actually accenting the next note. And for that, I'm really snapping my wrist, right? That's a little different um, because it's more like... Right, that kind of approach, which is a little different than what I've been talking about. Um, But I think through you seeing me play, I think you're seeing how important and how incorporated and ubiquitous the double stroke roll is. And if your double stroke roll sucks, it's going to change. It's not going to really help your sound at all. Right. Um, There are so many things that I play that I've I've seen other people play it. Other drummers, maybe some of my students or someone who who likes my playing and they'll play it. They got the notes, but they don't have the sound. And part of that is because the left hand. Often when your double stroke roll is weak, it's because your left hand is weak. Right. If you're if you're right hand dominant. So it ends up sounding like this. If you're not careful. So really pay attention to your left hand. So that is the lesson on the double stroke roll, ways of making it stronger, clearer, more even, uh, and with much more control, a la Tony Williams, okay? So have fun with it. If you did, if you haven't watched my other video on the drum roll, the press roll or the buzz roll, make sure you watch that. I'll put the link there. Um, and I think you're going to also learn a lot about how to really develop a good sounding press roll from that video. So until the next time, as always, practice hard, but practice smart. Otherwise, you're just wasting your time. All right? Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Take care.